Let's all stand and sing together. May be seated. Good morning. It is good to be with you this morning. Uh, we are having some technical difficulties, so anyone who watches this online will be watching it later. And if you do watch it later, we're glad you're joining us whenever that may be. I want to call your attention to the inserts and what is happening upcoming. A few things uh, vast, uh, quickly approaching. And uh, first of all, these are kind of out of order, uh, so I'm going to drop down this week. A uh, reminder that today at 2 o'clock will be the wedding shower for Matthew and Katie, and want to remind everyone of that. You see Bridge Group in session on Tuesday, other th activities taking place this week. Next week, they say, is Mother's Day, so it is a special day for your moms. Remember to treat your moms right. Um, also, Tuesday, May 23rd, will be the women's meeting, partnering with Nashville Diaper Connection. And then looking ahead to June... Uh, and I'm going to talk about one thing, and then Ian's going to come out and talk, come up and talk about a few more. First of all, Vacation Bible School, June 19th through the 22nd. We hope you will be here, and I'm sure he'll say something else about that. But I noticed something when I was reading the announcements. I don't always read the announcements ahead of time, uh, and I'm, or everything that's written. And it says, Rachel and Jackson Campbell need some of your trash. Jackson, you need trash? I got lots of trash, but they don't need just any trash. They need empty Kleenex boxes and paper towel tubes and used magazines. So you'll notice there is a place to drop those off in front. And I'm going to ask Mr. Where is Ian? Oh, get over here. You got some things to talk about. Yay. Hi, it's that time of year. 
summertime is almost here. So I wanted to take a quick moment and I don't want to say like advertise, but at least like make sure you know all the things that are happening this summer for, uh, that are available to teenagers and children that you might know or that you might be. Uh, so I'm going to go through the list. Most of them, most registrations are completely online this year, which is awesome. So uh, you will see along the journey of uh, through our summer, uh, there are QR codes available. There's also an insert in your bulletin with those QR codes and the links, and it's just all ready to be signed up for really quick and easy. So the first step in our summer is going to be Synodic Camp, June 4th through 9th. Our theme for this year is Out of This World, and we are talking about how mind-boggling God is. We're going to be going through the story of uh, our creation, uh, the stars in the sky, and then wind up thinking about what are we called to do, what are the out-of-this-world things we're called to do in our lives today. So uh, if you'd like to register, uh, June 4th through 9th, Synodic Senior High Camp is for any students uh, who are rising into 10th, 11th, 12th, or have just completed their last year um, in high school. Next step in our summertime is, of course, VBS! Uh, the, our fantastic VBS director, Cheryl Morris, uh, of course, needs lots of things, such as volunteers, and obviously Jackson needs your trash. So uh, if you have any questions or any thoughts, talk to Cheryl. Uh, probably not at like 2 p.m. today, I believe, but uh, <laughs> any other time, I'm sure she'd love to talk to you about that. Uh, Next step in our summertime is June 24th through 29th. Uh, Brent Haven's Youth Group, Youth Rocks, is headed to Wamalma, Florida, uh, which our secretary, uh, uh, Karen, knows really well because she's from Florida. She says it's going to be great. Uh, I think it's going to be very hot and really hard work, which is going to be great. But uh, if you have uh, any teenagers that want to join us for that, we are headed down to Florida to serve Bethel Farm Worker Ministry. Um, in a variety of ways. It's going to be a great opportunity to create bonds and to serve alongside people who are serving constantly throughout the year and worship alongside them. So I hope that any teenagers you know will be joining us for that. We continue into the summer to CPYC. This year is the 100th anniversary of the Cumberland Presbyterian Youth Conference. Uh, it is taking place once again at Bethel University. We are basically going to eat birthday cake every single day because uh, it's 100 years, so we're going to have 100 slices of birthday cake. Uh, not really, but that'll get some teenagers there, I hope. Uh, so I hope that your teenagers will be able to join us. The theme for this year is Feels Like Home because CPYC has felt like home to so many people over the last 100 years, and we want to bring those feelings back. But not only do we want to bring those feelings back, we want to bring those people back to CPYC. So that Friday through Saturday, we will have the first ever CPYC alumni event. Uh, you can register through the same portals, from what I believe. More information on that to come, I suppose. But if you're interested, or if you've ever been involved in CPYC, if you went as a volunteer, if you went as a student, if you went one time to drop some kids off and then you drove home, great! We want you to come back. Uh, we want you to come back and celebrate 100 years of CPYC uh, to see the generations of people who have grown to love uh, uh, this event. So CPYC will be at the end of that week, uh, the Friday and Saturday, right at the end of CPYC. Happening concurrently with CPYC, the same, very same week, is junior camp at Crystal Springs Church Camp, our, some of our favorite place, uh, some of, one of my favorite places at least. Uh, it is for rising third through sixth graders, and it's the same week as CPYC. One of the directors uh, is someone who you may know, Jay McCulley. Uh, they've been working very hard to put together what's going to be a beautiful week uh, pointed towards what's your story? Uh, maybe revolving around some stories that you might know from one of your favorite movies, maybe four or five movies. Uh, at Toy Story, that is correct. Uh, and 
the goal is going to be to consider what our stories are, uh, being strong and courageous, not frightened, not dismayed, because God is with us all through the journey. So I hope that children you know will sign up for that. And then we end out our summer. Finish it all. Last but hopefully not least is middle school camp. Uh, this year's theme is to infinity and beyond, striking just dead center between uh, Toy Story and the uh, and out of this world for Synodic Camp. Right in the middle is out of uh, to infinity and beyond, and we're talking about going beyond, uh, beyond just friendship, beyond just the word love. What can we do in this world? Uh, to go above and beyond what does God call us to do. So I hope that uh, any middle schoolers, rising 7th through ninth graders, will register to attend with us. Um, so that's our summer. And then Ian will sleep. Huh? There's yes, one there more. Is. That's not our summer. Oh, uh, there is one more. I, I can... July 15th. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Director of VBS uh, and Children's Advocate Cheryl Morris. Ian forgot one. Uh, the next day uh, after uh, middle school camp, July 15th, is Children's Fest. Uh, we don't have a slide for it because Ian forgets things. But <laughs> Children's, Fest, <laughs> Children's Fest is an incredible opportunity for all of the children that you know to gather with other Cumberland Presbyterian children and experience what it feels like to be loved, supported, and cared for by the Cumberland Presbyterian Church. Uh, it also has a long and storied history of loving children. So I hope that the children that you know will also sign up to, to join that journey um, and travel with us down to Bethel University to experience something beautiful and loved with, with other CP children. Did I forget any other summer things? Okay. Uh, sweet. I only forgot one. I hope that you and uh, I hope that the children that you know, the teenagers that you know, will sign up to join us for our, our summertime events. Uh, in general, I love that Brent Haven supports children and youth so deeply and loves and cares for them so deeply. Uh, the teenagers and children realize how much work you put into. If you know a child or a teenager that would love to attend one of these events, but there is something that is a barrier that Brent Haven can uh, help to make not a barrier any longer, for example, money, transportation, um, feeling like we don't have friends that are already there, I don't know, whatever that looks like, please contact someone from Brent Haven staff or Discipleship Ministries team uh, because there's ways to make sure those barriers don't stop us from getting to camp, from getting to Children's Fest, to getting to our summer events. So I hope that all of our children will mark their calendars and join us for a summer filled with fun. I don't even. And after that summer, we're all going to take a long nap. One other thing I wanted to make sure you are aware of in your bulletin is the it is that time for Relder recommendations. You're asked to make put some names on this list and you can drop it in the offering plate or bring it by the church office. Looking at our prayer concerns, uh, just a couple of, the, you see the recent additions. We wanted to let you know Don Tabor is uh, rehabbing in Encompass. We'll be there probably most of this week, continuing rehab from a uh, broken leg. And Julie Travis it will be rehabbing from surgery uh, this past week as well, and we continue to remember them both as, as well as everyone on our list. It is good to be together as we come and worship. Let's worship God together.
Loving God, as we come together in worship this morning, send your spirit to move among us as we come to listen and to be at peace and to feel your presence. Lord, we are here. In Jesus' name, amen. Jesus taught us mercy by praying for the forgiveness of those who killed him. This amazing grace assures us that no matter what we've done, no matter the words we've left unsaid, we can come to Christ with our honest confession. Let us pray together. Amazing Lord, you have shown us the way so clearly and fully. You have not simply told us how to live, you have shown us. But we still don't get it. We do not believe all you have said to us. We do not trust the way you have shown us. Help us, O God. Forgive us. Open our ears to your truth. Open our eyes to your way. And lead us into new life. Amen. Friends, believe the good news. Jesus prepares a place for us. Jesus brings us close to him. Jesus answers us even to our unbelief. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. seated we'd like to invite the children if they would to meet me here at the front please
You sit right there until I call on you. I'm coming down. There's a reason for my actions. You'll see in a moment. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. How are we this morning? Ricola. Okay, so got a question for you. What do I have in my hands? Well, yeah, but I actually do have something in my hands. What are they? Anybody got any ideas? Huh? Rocks. That's exactly right. I got rocks. See, I had some, I had some assistants today. I asked them to do me a favor, and they did. What, two of them did exactly as I asked. You'll see what the third one did in just a moment. I asked them to go outside and to find me some rocks, some stones, if you will. So what do you think about those? Are they nice? So rocks can be amazing. Now, this one right here, everybody notice, you see how different they are? So what can I do with these rocks? Well, give me an idea. So give me, give me, what can I do with these rocks? Oh, this would be a good skipping stone, wouldn't it? Take that sucker and go, whoa, and watch it. How many times do you think I get it going across the water? Huh? Three? Give me a little bit of, I could get a little more than three. You could skip this one. What else could I what can I do with these rocks? Ah, we could paint. What, 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 what could we paint on them? Ah, the Brent Haven. Uh, yeah, somebody who's a lot better at it than I could could do that. You're right, it would fit. Actually, if we did it like this, we could get that whole cross on there. What else could we do with them? Anything else? You what? I could sell them. Would anybody like to buy a rock? Ah, we got we got a taker in the back. What else could we do with them? What? I could save them and make a rock collection. You know what else I could do with it? You know what else I could do with it? Play rock tag. I like that name. No, you can't do rock paper scissors, but rock tag. You know what rock tag is? Rock tag is if I have Jay stand up and see if I can tag him with the rock from right here. That's rock tag, right? I could throw this rock, couldn't I? I could hurt someone with this rock, right? Oh, See, I, what I appreciate is y'all had all these ideas of things you could do with these stones, these rocks. And y'all all came up with the good things. You know what the first thing I thought of? I could knock out that window right there with actually. Oh, you'll have to take it. You'll have to take it. You know what else I could do? You know what else I could do? I could make Ian not talk as much with this rock. Cover yeah. There are some bad things. Now, I asked a third person to bring me a rock as well. Um, would the third person please bring his rock to me, his stone, and place it, just, just bring it right over here. No, 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 uh, 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 over here, over here, over here, over here. Yeah, I said, please bring one I could pick up, set it down right there, set it down right there, yeah, right there, yeah. So when you ask someone to bring you a rock that you can pick up, now, where are you going? You get back down here. When you ask someone to pick you up a stone, uh, down here, please. You're not that much bigger than me. You, you expect them to bring you what you ask, right? Tell me what I could do with that stone right there. That? This? No, no, no. This stone. What? You could, um, throw it out the window. That big stone? I don't think I could throw it out the window. I could tie it around his ankles and throw him in the water. No, I don't want to. But you know what else you can do with that stone? You know what you can do with that stone you can't do with these? You can use that to begin to build upon it. If I begin to shape it and cut it down and lay it flat, you can start building things on it, right? You see, the reason we're talking about rocks is not because I want you to go play outside. It is definitely not because I want you to throw one. It is because there are two passages of Scripture we're going to listen to, and there's this stones keep coming up stones rocks sometimes we get those two things we use those two things at the same and what it talks about is one of the deals talks about how stones were used to hurt someone and then one of them talks about how someone is a stone a living stone you see I like to pick at Josh a lot of times because some things that people don't realize is when Josh was your age and he would come down you know what he would do when he would come down for the children's sermon? Josh, where would you go when we come down for the children's sermon? Over there. Over there. And Josh, who would sit with you over there? Uh, no one. So he would go over there by himself, and I would have to go, uh, Josh, and he would slide on over. 
You see, he was, we had to really shape this stone. We had to chip away at some of that stubbornness. But you see, what is important about Josh and about the youth and about all these adults and about you is that you are all part. You are all stones that the church is built on. And we can use stones and be stones that hurt people. We can, and we do sometimes. When we talk ugly to someone, when we talk back to our parents, when we don't listen, we're being stones that hurt others. But we can be stones that are built with Jesus as the first and us being built on top. So I want you to remember when you see these rocks, that rocks can be used for bad. Stones can be used for bad, but they can be used for good. And look how good you can turn out. Better than this. <laughs> but not a lot better. So I want you to remember, you are a stone that God is building on each moment of your life. Let's pray. Loving God, I, I thank you for stones, even the hard-headed ones. We thank you for the uniqueness and the special gift they are to us. Help us to be stones of which you can build upon. And when others see us, they see you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks, y'all. And after church, you're taking that back where you found it. No, no, leave it there. Let us pray. Lord, as we listen to your holy word, open our hearts to the power of your spirit. Call us out of darkness and lead us into your marvelous light. Amen. Our first reading today comes from Acts chapter 7, verses 55 through 60. But filled with the Holy Spirit, he gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they covered their ears, and with a loud shout all rushed together against him. Then they dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. And the witnesses laid their coats at the feet of a young man named, named Saul. While they were stoning Stephen, he prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he knelt down and cried out in a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he had said this, he died. Our second reading comes from 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 2 through 10. Like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow into salvation, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. Come to him, a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight. And like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in scripture, see, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. To you then who believe, he is precious, but for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner and a stone that makes them stumble and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the word as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
There's a wideness in God's mercy, like the wideness of the sea. There's a kindness in his justice, which is more than liberty. There is welcome for the sinner, and more graces for the good. There is mercy with the Savior, there is healing in his blood. But we make his love too narrow by false limits of our own. And we magnify his strictness with a zeal he will not own. For the love of God is broader than the measure of the mind. And the heart of the eternal is most wonderfully kind. If our love were but more simple, we could take him at his word. And our lives would be more loving in the likeness of our Lord. For the love of God is broader than the measure of the mind. And the heart of the eternal is most wonderfully kind. The gospel reading this morning comes from John's Gospel, the 14th chapter, verses 1 through 14. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do. And in fact, will do greater works than these because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. Loving God, we give you thanks for this word which we have heard. And we seek now its message for us. Open our ears and our hearts and speak to us in spite of the one who stands before. As only you can. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Every one of us in here have remembered and know that saying... I'm going to assume that most of you sitting out here have probably not said that in quite some time. Those of you over here, maybe more recently, and those in the very back, if they haven't already said it, will soon, because it is the child way of us giving a comeback to someone who has called us names or something ugly. 
For me, it was also the way of deflecting those comments, and it was much better than looking at them and going, yo, mama. So, but as kids, even though we said it, it really wasn't true. We know that, especially as adults, words can and do sometimes hurt. Maybe they don't break a bone, but they can definitely hurt. As for the other sticks and stones, there is no question what they can do. But let's be clear, sticks and stones could get a bad rap by this old comeback because the truth is the ultimate use of sticks and stones is dependent upon the person who holds them in their hands and their intentions. This is what I have been thinking about as I was getting prepared for this week because there is this recurring mention of stones in the two passages you heard Renee reading a little bit ago. Now, for those of you who were in geology or in your science class, you may remember there are those three classifications of rock, igneous rocks that come from volcanic lava that's cooled and solidified, and sedimentary rocks and, and metamorphic rocks, and all of them are formed by the influence of either water or gravity or pressure or, or something like that. In essence, rocks are formed under severe conditions, fire or pressure or water, so often, though, I am guilty of interchanging stone and rock synonymously. I mean, they seem to be the same. However, I am certain any petrologist or mineralogist would correct me. Thankfully, I don't know any. So, unless some of you in here are one and I didn't realize it. But the truth is that stones come from rocks or stones make up rocks. So while we may use them interchangeably, the Greek differentiates between two words, lithos, stone, and petra, rock. And today, these texts that we heard focus upon the lithos, the stones. And we know that stones are everywhere, and you can do a myriad of things with them. In the Bible, we see them used as pillows. We see them used to seal tombs and to drop giants. Today you can collect them, you can paint them, you can landscape with them, you can make countertops out of them, and you can throw them. As we heard in the story of Stephen from Acts, stones can be used to hurt. Throwing stones. We would like to say that we don't do that, but we do do that. And why do we do that? We start as children using real stones or hurtful words. We exclude and we blame. And as we grow up, we pick larger, harder stones like passive aggressive behaviors and racism and weapons of mass destruction. We have all thrown a stone or two, whether we want to admit it or not. And sometimes... Those words that don't, won't hurt me feel just like a stone. The fire and pressure of those words we hear as children sometimes make our adult hearts like stone. Wasn't it Jesus who said, let anyone among you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone? Jesus knows that we are fully capable of some stone-throwing behavior and granted, it may have been a while since we bent down and picked up a stone and threw it at someone else. But what about those metaphorical stones? What might they be? And how do we throw them? Perhaps they are those hurtful words that we hurl even at our loved ones in our anger and in our frustration. Maybe they are the words of criticism and condemnation or judgment. Or maybe our favorites are the stones of sarcasm or the weighty stones of holding grudges against someone that we supposedly love. Sometimes they're in the form of exchanging heated words with those with whom we don't agree. And as much as I enjoy social media, that has become a stoning pit. And lately there seems to be a, a landslide of stones of hate and vitriol unlike anything we've experienced before. 
According to social scientist Arthur Brooks, we don't have an anger or hate problem in society as much as we have a contempt problem, which is far worse. Contempt is defined as that mix of the primary emotions of disgust and anger. It's the feeling that a person or a thing is beneath consideration, worthless or deserving scorn, and contempt is a very dangerous thing. The danger lies in its peculiar ability to dehumanize the target. Widespread public contempt has the potential to undermine the moral basis of all human relationships. And that's where we are when we see Stephen in that story. We don't get the whole story. You don't know that we didn't get all of the stuff that happened beforehand. As a member of the community, Stephen was assigned to serve the food to those who were hungry, to tend to the widows. But for some reason, God wanted him to preach. And so he gets up and he starts talking to them and preaching to them. And we could probably say that he was giving them one of those hellfire, damnation type sermons. Fire and brimstone pounding on the pulpit. He recounted the history of the people of Israel speaking to them about their failure to hear God's voice and God's purpose that the prophets had told them about. He reminded them about long ago, God told Moses that they were a stiff-necked people, and that enraged the council. And they caused them to grind their teeth, and they became filled with contempt for Stephen. So much so that they threatened him that if he said one more thing, Stephen gazed into heaven filled with the Holy Spirit and saw the glory of God and the contempt of the council could hold no more. And they dragged him out of the city. And they took those stones and they pounded him to his death. It was a painful story. Those who live in contempt destroy relationships and even lives. And in his last words, Stephen, knowing he was losing his life, commends his spirit to Jesus, just as Jesus had commended his spirit to the Father. And he begins to pray, not with contempt, but he prays for his enemies Asking God, Lord, do not hold this against them. Sounding familiar words of Jesus on the cross. Father, forgive them. There are always going to be stones available for throwing. And people who are angry enough to throw them heat and the pressures and the raging waters of life harden our hearts to stone and yet Peter reminds us in that second reading that our hearts can be transformed by the cornerstone of our faith because those who claim to follow Jesus are to bear witness to him by imitating his kind heartedness and his peaceful self-sacrifice. I'm thankful for Peter's words, who shows us a different side of stones. Peter speaks of living stones here, and these aren't simply rocks that you find on the ground. They are cut stones, hewn to precise dimensions for the construction and building. I am one of those who watches HGTV, and I love the renovation shows and the new buildings, And I love watching them tear that thing down and then they start laying those stones, the cornerstone first and then everything coming out from it. Precisely placed so everything comes out just as it was planned, usually. And once the foundation is laid, those blocks bear the weight of the house, holding it up in the right areas into this beautiful construction. And for Peter, that first stone, that cornerstone, is the living stone, Jesus Christ. 
And he talks about how Jesus, the living stone, was rejected by humans. And then Paul recalls, uh, Peter recalls Christ's own unjust trial before the, right, the religious government. And then the human powers that be rejected that stone. But their verdict was not the last word. Because Christ, chosen by God, precious to him, defeated what was supposed to be the end, defeated death. The cosmic irony is that death could not keep the stone down. And when we come to Christ, when we come to know and walk and follow Jesus, we are incorporated into that body, the church, being built up, living stones into a spiritual house. One of the things recently, there's a lot, been a lot of construction back here in the back, and I've noticed, especially on the house that they're working on the most right now, right back over here, they have gone and they started putting up a, a, a stone front. And if you watch them every once in a while, you'll see them pick up the stone and they start to figure out. Now, you know, I like puzzles, but I don't think I could be a person, I don't think that I could be a person who liked puzzles enough that I could put stones on the side of a house because what they have to do is begin to set it there and then they'll take a little rock and, or a little hammer and start chiseling away just so it fits perfect. They hewn it, they shape it so that it fits right where it is to go. Building stones need to be shaped and fitted to do their job. Building stones function as they line up, come together, connected together. That's who we are as the people of God. That's how it is with the living stones of the church. God has shaped each one of us to have a part in this work. God has given each one of us gifts and talents that contribute to the whole. You see, we need one another to make the house complete. We need to be connected, joined together. Joined together by the cornerstone, the living stone, Jesus Christ, through the word and sacrament, built up in the faith in order to remain strong and not to crumble. We are God's living stones. And as Peter reminds us, you yourselves, like living stones, are being built up as a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. But here's the dilemma. Which type of stone will we be? We need to be honest here. At least I'll be honest enough to say that sometimes I can hurl hurtful stones. And sometimes I have had, hur I have had hurtful stones hurled at me. But as people of faith, we are called to build up, not to tear down. We are called to come to one another with our gifts coming together. It's one of the biggest blessings you have ever had is you have never heard me do what Sandra did just a moment ago. You don't want me to sing a solo. Unless it's so low you can't hear me. Because that is not a gift that I have. You see, it takes all of us coming together to build the house. Peter said we are living stones, shaped and fitted together, built up to be this house connected to Jesus Christ, the chief cornerstone, and we are a holy priesthood set apart to belong to God, dedicated to his service, offering up sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Will we be a stone big enough that 
built together, we can stand on. Or, will we be a stone that in the midst of our contempt and our anger and our frustration, we hurl at someone else out of anger to hurt? I guess that's the choice we have to make. standing as we affirm our faith together. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated. Let us go to God in prayer. O oh Lord, we thank you for the gift of faith worked within us by your Holy Spirit. We thank you for having called us to yourself, for consecrating us to your service, for having set us apart for the sacred ministry of prayer. And so we come to pray. We pray for the church in all her breadth and variety gathered out of every nation, every family, people, and tongue to be a priesthood serving you. 
young churches and old churches, small churches and large churches, weak churches and strong churches. Grant to the church true lowliness and genuine humility where there is pride or unity, where there is division. Grant to her truth where there is error and wisdom, where there is folly, that you might fulfill your purposes for her. We pray for those to whom you've entrusted the affairs of your house, your pastors and elders and leaders and volunteers and ministry teams. Give them the spirit of service and true humility, a sense of spiritual devotion and delight in those whom they serve. Oh Lord, help them lead your people in the way of Christ. We pray for all peoples of all nations. We pray that in every land there might be peace and justice. Grant that in our own communities, those who are troubled, those who suffer, those who are discouraged might find support in time of need, especially from your church. And we especially remember those who do the work for the troubled and the suffering and the discouraged. Lord, in this crazy world, we lift up to you the leaders of the nations. Help them to know that you have called them to serve their people faithfully in your fear and for your glory and for their good. Lord, we pray for those who have special needs. To all who suffer sickness or weakness, we pray for health and strength. To all who are disturbed or troubled, we pray for rest and understanding. For the lonely and the alienated, we pray for fellowship and an awareness that they are loved. For those who grieve and are in sorrow, please give comfort and assurance. Lord, we have a list that goes on forever and ever. And we just pour our hearts out to you. We bring these prayers to you in the name of the one who prayed for us and who sits with you, and who interceded for us, and who we trust will come again. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As the people of God, let us offer ourselves and the fruit of our labor for God's work in the world. Let us bring our tithes and offerings.
may be seated. They come from the north and the south and the east and the west. They come together to sit at table. A table that though it sits here in the sanctuary of Brent Haven is God's table. God's meal prepared for each of us to come and to receive. But before we do so, let us go to God in this time of prayer. Most gracious and loving God, we give you thanks for life. We are awed by your graciousness in spite of the way that we act in this world. We want to be the stones of which the church is built, but so often we fall short. So often we are guilty of tossing stones instead of being living stones. So we come to you humbly, knowing that we are not worthy and yet receiving and stepping into those open arms of which you call us. Remembering that from the beginning of time when you breathed life into us, You reminded us that you love us, for we are yours. Your patience is undeniable. So we come before you to receive this bread and this cup, remembering the gift of your son, remembering all that he did for us, the love he showed us, the grace he offered to us, and coming together with one voice, praying the prayer that he taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We know how the story is told that on the night that he was betrayed, Jesus, as the host, took the bread, he blessed it, and then he broke it. And he said words to the disciples that they had never heard before. He said, this is my body which is broken for you. Take and eat and do so in remembrance of me. And after they had eaten, he took the cup. He says, this is my blood which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Likewise, when you drink of it, do so in remembrance of me. So that in the eating of the bread and in the drinking of the cup, we are reminded that one day Jesus will be back. As the elders make their way forward, I remind you that you will be coming forward and taking the bread and the cup. If you are unable to come forward, please remain in your seats and we will bring those to you. This is a gift to everyone. Everyone is invited to come to this table.
Loving God, we give you thanks for this bread and this cup, for the hope that it offers and the reminder of the future. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you. Are considered a holy priesthood, living stones. As you go through each day, sometimes it can be very difficult to live into that responsibility. There are going to be moments that you feel like one of those hardened stones that can hurt someone. I beg you that when you come to that, to stop and to listen for the voice of God who calls to you and reminds you that in Christ we have a cornerstone that gives us strength to continue to build up the family of faith. So go, fully aware that we are not perfect and fully aware that in the midst of those struggles, God is there with us each and every day. Go in peace.